Yo, what's going on? Mike from Mike Talk Sports. Huge news in the NBA world as Bradley Beal is moved to the Suns in a trade that involves Landry Shamit. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at Landry Shamit's career and answering the question of why Landry Shamit is consistently in trades throughout his entire career. So Landry Shamit went to Wichita State for college basketball, and he was a standout player at Wichita State, a program that had a good amount of success while he was there as well. He was first team all AAC, and he was first team all MVC, also winning all freshman honors in his conference. So in 2018, he declared for the NBA draft. And with the 26th pick of the 2018 draft, the Philadelphia 76ers ended up taking Landry Shamit, And he was doing pretty good for the 76ers at the beginning part of his rookie year until at the trade deadline of his rookie year, Landry Shamit was traded. He was traded in a big trade involved with the Clippers. And in this trade... The 76ers were obviously in win now mode and Landry at that point in the season had played good enough to be a good young trade asset to help facilitate this trade. So the 76ers ended up getting Tobias Harris in hopes of making the NBA finals with Tobias Harris. They thought that could be the final push. So he ended up ending his rookie season the last 30 games or so of the season was with the Clippers. And looking back at his rookie season, it was pretty wild that he had already been on two NBA teams at this point, but he ended up making all rookie team in his rookie year. So he was a standout rookie. He averaged nine points per game, 42% from three on five attempts per game. Phenomenal shooting splits for Landry Shamit. He proved to be one of the better catch and shoot three point artists, one of the better role players in the NBA already. So it was seeming like this was a nice win-win trade for not only the 76ers getting Tobias Harris, but for the Clippers getting a young good shooter who also offered some upside on the defensive end as well. Now we flash forward to his second season 2019 to 2020. He spent this entire season on the Clippers but at the end of this season before the 2020 to 2021 season the Clippers ended up moving him. They moved him to the Brooklyn Nets for a deal that included Luke Kennard on draft night. This deal in hindsight was pretty insignificant for both teams as neither teams really got viable assets for the future in this trade. And so in the 2020 to 2021 season, of course, he spent this entire year on the Nets. And in this year, he averaged 9.3 points per game, very similar to his rookie output in his overall output with the Clippers and the 76ers. He averaged 38.7% from the three on 40.8% from the field in total on 23 minutes a night. In the offseason before the 2021 to the 2022 season, after this one singular season with the Nets, the Nets ended up trading him. So he was only a Brooklyn Net for a single season. And they traded him to the Suns also on draft night. So the second time in his career, he's getting traded on draft night. And he was moved for Javon Carter and the 29th pick. This 29th pick really did not end up being anything. So the Suns more or less, let's be honest, got Landry Shamit for free. And Landry Shamit spent the last two years on the Suns being one of the staples of their bench lineups. Definitely getting some starts sprinkled in there over the past two seasons as well. And in those two seasons, he's averaged 21 minutes per game for the Suns, again, being one of the more notable role players on their team. 8.4 points per game, which is really nice given the amount of minutes he's played. 38.7% from the field and 37.1% from three. And of course, this makes us flash forward to today, this moment in time. June 18th, 2023, where he was just traded to the Wizards for Bradley Beal in the Bradley Beal deal. So now that we've properly understood his entire situation in his entire career, why has he consistently been traded throughout his entire career? Well, I think at the beginning, and I think with the first trade in Landry Shamit's career, it was legitimately a situation where the 76ers just took a flyer on the 26th pick in the NBA draft. Most late round picks in 
in the NBA draft really end up being nothing. And I think the 76ers were shocked at how good Landry Shamit was playing. And they said, hmm, let's trade him now. Let's trade him when we think his trade value is at his highest. His shooting splits are absolutely incredible at the moment. He's shooting above 40% from three. I don't think he can do that throughout his entire career here. So we're going to trade him when his trade value is high. I think that was really the initial situation with Landry Shamit. But ever since then, I think I've already alluded to it, reading out his shooting splits. His shooting splits straight up have gone down every single year. Every single year, Landry Shamit is shooting the three ball worse and worse with less and less consistency. So in my opinion, the reason why teams like the Nets have traded him, teams like the Clippers have traded him, and teams now like the Suns have traded him, these organizations get Landry Shamit with the idea that Landry Shamit has the potential to be a very consistent role player, a guy who can potentially shoot above 40% from three. But the reality of the situation is once he gets to their team, he's about a league average shooter. He's a guy who's going to be on fire for a couple nights, then absolutely ice cold for other nights. So he's just not consistent enough for a role player to be averaging 25, 26, 27 minutes minutes per game, which is what he's averaged for the most part in his career with these teams. So to me, these teams have realized maybe his trade value in the perception around Landry Shamit is more valuable than the actual play he is producing on the court for the specific team that he's on. So he ends up being traded to another team that thinks they can tap into that Landry Shamit potential of being a very good three-point shooter in the NBA. And while he's certainly shown flashes every single team he's been on, especially the Suns, as he's had some of his best performances of his entire career lately with the Suns, I think the Suns realized if we get Bradley Beal in there and then we get a mid-level exception player to play the Landry Shamit role or even a minimum contract guy, we can realistically bring in a guy who gives us league average three-point shooting on slightly less attempts per game than Landry Shamit gives us. Now, Landry Shamit has shown the ability to be a pretty high-end defender on the perimeter, which is something I really like out of Landry Shamit, but the offensive consistency has not been there. He's more or less been a below average efficiency player from the field his entire career. He's never shot above 45% from the field and that's about league average. So his entire career, he's been really below league average shooting the ball. Thanks for listening, guys. Let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on Landry Shamit? And do you agree with my take that Landry Shamit most likely is only going to be on the Wizards for about 40 games before they trade him near the trade deadline? Again, thanks for listening, guys.